Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Tuesday of the third week of Easter. And today is also a feast day. Today is the feast day of two of the apostles, Philip and James. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to Thomas, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have have I been with you so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do, and will do greater ones than these, because I am going to the Father. And whatever you ask in my name, I will do, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, today being uh, the feast day of two of the apostles, our readings for the Mass are special. And, uh, for example, there is no reading from the Acts of the Apostles today. So we are back in the Gospel according to John. And even though this is about two apostles, really our Gospel reading is focusing on one of them. The two for today are Philip and James. Now, this is not James, the brother of John, the son of Zebedee. This is James, the son of Alphaeus. He is also called James the Less because you have James the Greater and James the Lesser. And uh, those are two of the apostles, both with the same name. And uh, James, the brother of John, was older than uh, James, the son of Alphaeus. And so he became James the Greater. Uh, It's kind of like uh, giving somebody the name junior and senior, Uh, but of course they weren't father and son. But this James, we don't know a lot about other than the fact that he was called as one of the apostles of our Lord and was used faithfully in uh, carrying out the work of evangelization even uh, after the time of the resurrection. And then we have Philip. And Philip, of course, we run into early on in the Gospels because he was one of the first apostles to be called and, in fact, was the one that uh, invited Nathaniel to also come and follow Jesus. And so uh, from Bethsaida, we have uh, Philip, uh, of course, uh, being one of the faithful apostles. We don't really know much about him except that his name is Greek. And so that brings an interesting dynamic to his place among the apostles. The other thing about Philip is that uh, he becomes the focal point here in the Last Supper discourse. We have, of course, Thomas, uh, who, you know, uh, uh, really is trying to get a hold of an understanding of what Jesus is talking about when he says, you know, where I'm, where I'm going, uh, you cannot come. And he says, well, how can we come? We don't even know the way. And so uh, he really is responding to Thomas first. And then uh, Philip also says something about what he just said, because he said, if you know me, then you will also know my father. And then Philip shares a question with Jesus. He says, Master, Show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. And this really points to a couple of things, one of which is that Philip was probably picked out here and uh, highlighted in this gospel because he was representing a question that not only did he have, but the other disciples did as well in terms of 
fa- uh, what show us the Father? And it was Philip's question that gave Jesus an opportunity to even expound more fully on what he's talking about. Uh, Philip, don't you still know me? And and so uh, it was an opportunity for him to expound greater. And it's it's interesting to me here that uh, he didn't say, you know, Philip, have you been with me so long and you still don't know me? Well, you go back and just think about all of the things I said, and I think you're going to come to a conclusion. No, he didn't do that. Instead, he explained to him one more time what he means when he says that the Father is in him and he is in the Father. And so he, he really expounds on that, that uh, the Father dwells in me. In other words, there is a unique connection between the Father and the Son that goes beyond what they might understand as a biological relationship between a father and a son. But they are of the same uh, substance. Uh, the way we describe it in the creed is consubstantial, of the same substance, one in being, one in substance with the Father. They, The Father and he are one. And that's one of the things that he wanted Philip and the other apostles to truly again uh, understand and have reinforced in their mind that there's this unique relationship there. And also, he is the apostle to whom Jesus gives these words, whoever believes in me will do greater works than I do and will do greater ones than these because I am going to the Father. So he is sharing with Philip those powerful words that as he goes, that he is going to uh, bring about a greater amount of work being done in the world. And of course, he expands on this and uh, talks about it in greater measure. So it was Philip that really ignited Jesus uh, to talk not only about his relationship with the Father, but then also uh, to talk about the coming of the Advocate, the coming of the Holy Spirit. So Philip was used in a powerful way in the upper room to help to underscore and acknowledge all that God is doing through Jesus Christ. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, there we have uh, the story of Philip, and of course today being the feast of Philip and James the Lesser. uh, This is a good chance for us again to kind of go into our saints' biographies and learn just a few things about these two great saints. The thing that's interesting that that it inspires me about some of the apostles like uh, James and Philip is that they didn't have this uh, primary role in uh, the Gospels like Peter, James, and John. And they really weren't that, uh, uh, I guess, noted, or they, they didn't uh, go down in history with, with great stories. But they were chosen because of their faithfulness and that they would then go and proclaim the gospel to other places. So they were selected for their faithfulness and their courage, especially after the receiving of the Holy Spirit, gave them strength to go forth and to change the world. So may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.